morning everyone. I am back in the Netherlands, back in Delft. Okay, so let me get you up to speed on what has been developing over the last few months. Turn on some lights. Okay, so had a little trip throughout Europe, super nice, but now uh, full steam ahead back at the plastic scanner. And I got some, uh, some interesting new developments. So let me get some of the prototypes in. So earlier you could see us develop the development board 2.2 and this made it easy to make a lot of changes to see if we can switch to the other ADC and yeah so far all of the changes seem good. Uh, it seems that the ADC is a little bit less precise than the original Texas Instruments ones but at least this one is easily available so that helps a lot in an in an open source project. Um, basically, now we're quite satisfied with the development board as is, and we would like to continue uh, more towards something that is that can be applied more in the field. Um, so for that, we started developing the development board 2.3. Uh, this is still exactly the same footprint. It also can cater to uh, Arduino Uno, um, but the cool thing is that this one has some slits down the middle and that makes it so that you could break it in half and only have the sensor side and not the processing side, which makes it independent from what kind of processor you use. So now originally it was developed for the Arduino Uno because there's a very good documentation and it's uh, Arduino in general is a great open hardware project, uh, but we would like to see also if it's possible to use it with other platforms, for example, the ESP32. So in order to do good communication with that, there is a I2C connector uh, where you can connect to it and then talk to everything on the sensor board. Um, we started building these prototypes and now we actually got to the point where we have one of the boards integrated into a housing. Um, that looks something like this. There's the development board. There is a uh, quick connect or stemma connect to a ESP32 board like so and then there are a couple of cables going to the led uh, led board uh, at the moment we're using an independent led board so we can easily switch between different prototypes and we don't need to solder on these leds every time which are rather expensive um, but they, basically this would contain the whole package and then even without this part um, and then you get something like this, very similar to one of the earliest prototypes of the plastic scanner. Uh, it has a screen for output, it has a button for scanning, it has a connector for power, and on the back there are LEDs. At the moment you cannot see them because there is a backing material. Now why is this backing material there? Uh, we found that we get a lot better readings if there is a backside of Sintiv PTFE that can reflect any of the infrared light. So let's say you have a plastic sample, you have the infrared light coming in, some of the infrared light reflects, but some of it also goes through the plastic. And if you have something that reflects it back there, then it also comes back through the plastic once more and you get a better signal. However, we did find that there is a little bit less accuracy with the new ADC chip and um, that is also why we started to test some other things and what we found at the moment is that for example if you have a laser cutting place then this could be quite an interesting application because you have 
sort of clean plastic. It's a group of only around four or five types of plastic that can be laser cut. And that makes it very easy for such a plastic scanner to identify it. So for example, we have PMMA, polycarbonate, um, PET, and polystyrene. And lastly, also polypropylene. Um, and with these one, with these samples, uh, basically how it works now is that you have a, uh, a plastic scanner device, you place it in the back and sort of with a, with a cloth pack, it keeps everything together and then you can take a reading and it shows you what type of plastic it is or what it thinks it's the, the most likely type of plastic. And now this is also cool because this is also something we did for the first time. We went from not using the PS plot and having this 3D scatter graph to a machine interpreting the type of plastic. And basically with that, we started to implement our first initial revisions of the machine learning aspect and having a device, embedded device running TensorFlow Lite uh, doing the prediction of the type of plastic. This is very basic and it's a very much a, a start of a project, um, but it does help to sort of shape how we would like the future to look like. So now it just gives the highest likely outcome of the type of plastic. And once we have trained it with the PMMA, PS, PET, polypropylene, and then also some others, so it knows, well, if it's like this, then it's no good. Um, then we can, uh, we can get a fairly accurate model that, can, that is able to yeah, identify quite a lot of these um, common laser cutting plastics where the sides are even, it's clean and you are able to identify it. So these are one of the latest developments of the plastic scanner. Unfortunately, at this moment, we cannot recommend using something like this on a landfill somewhere around the world. Uh, for that, it's not accurate enough. There are a lot of types of plastic that it can be. And it would be good if we have a more accurate sensor or uh, more processing so that we can also cater to all of these other types of plastic. But for now, um, this is already a great start, having some specific use cases and running some pilots there. So that's basically the update from this time. Uh, in about a month, there's going to be another update. And uh, we're excited to, uh, to share our progress. If you want to jump in, you can jump in through the Discord group or also check out all the files on either docs.plasticscanner.com or at the GitHub repository. There you can find all of the different repositories. And we now also made one for the TensorFlow Lite model for this one specifically, with also the Google Collab to train the model and then the, um, the Arduino environment running on the ESP32. I'm super happy that I'm back at it. I hope you are as well. So see you around next time.